Gallstones are very common. Uh, it's estimated that about 10 to 15 percent of the population will develop gallstones at some point in their life. However, uh, the important thing to remember about gallstones is that most gallstones do not cause any symptoms. And out of all the people that develop gallstone-related problems, for example, about 10 percent of these will become symptomatic. And by symptomatic, what we mean is that they may develop pain, uh, which may not necessarily require hospitalization. It's usually pain after eating, um, or in more severe cases, the patient may end up in hospital uh, and require antibiotics. And that's because the gallbladder becomes either infected or inflamed. There are other complications of gallstones, uh, and that's where the gallstone might drop out of the gallbladder and enter a big channel which connects the liver to the food pipe. And you can get serious complications in terms of pancreatitis and blockage of the bile that where patients become jaundiced. Patients require surgery if they have symptomatic gallstone disease. And that basically means they have pain, which is related to eating, or they develop complications like acute cholecystitis, chronic cholecystitis where you've got long-term scarring, or complications associated with the stone popping into the duct and irritating the glands or causing a blockage. That leads to jaundice. I would like to introduce Dr. John Reed, who is my consultant anaesthetist. Uh, John, could you possibly tell us a little bit about the anaesthetic side of laparoscopic cholecystectomy and uh, what the patient will go through. Laparoscopic cholecystectomies are um, still a significant operation, but with advances in surgical technique and anaesthetic technique, um, we can reduce the side effects and accelerate their recovery. So they're going home within really only a few hours of the surgery. It does require selecting the right patient. So we really want to avoid having patients with too many comorbidity, so that's a very important part of the pre-assessment phase and we have a very um, dynamic, uh, smart technology software uh, developed to actually streamline this process. And then on the day of surgery it's all about um, maximising the pain relief, um, minimising any side effects and using the short-acting drugs um, which, which work so well with, with your surgical technique to get these patients through and, um, and home as soon as possible. Of course, there are those patients which are highly complex patients, and given your background of complex HPB surgery and liver transplantation, how are these patients particularly managed? You're right, we have to uh, balance um, the risks and benefits, and so th these patients have a higher risk of, of um, complications, but also the fact that they may not be able to have uh, laparoscopic surgery and may end up being an OMPR procedure. So uh, we have to uh, select the right patients. If they're really high risk patients, then we have to do it in a, in a center prepared for um, what is a you know, complex major surgery. But uh, you know, if you have a couple of comorbidities, um, we, we are pushing the bounds of what we're able to do as um, day case surgery now. And um, even patients with significant comorbidities are, are coping extremely well with surgery. Once patients are admitted, uh, they have usually undergone a pre-assessment process. Um, they're prepared for theatre uh, and essentially we've asked patients to usually staff themselves for approximately six hours for solid food and about four hours for liquid food. When they arrive, um, they be consented uh, and that's a, an, an information sheet which is provided to them uh, with information provided by the surgeon who's treating them to uh, the risks and benefits of the surgery that they may undertake. Once this is signed, uh, they then enter theatre. Uh, there is some checking in theatre to make sure um, that the operation is indicated uh, and the various governance aspects that we take fairly strongly here at the Royal Free. Uh, and then the operation begins. The operation itself uh, involves keyhole surgery. Keyhole surgery is also a lay term for minimal access surgery, where we have four small holes created on the abdominal wall. These, the first hole is created just below the level of the belly button. And this allows the introduction of a gas called carbon dioxide, which is harmless to us as we breathe it out all the time. The gas enters the tummy cavity, uh, and that allows us to, to see what we're doing, but also gives us space to operate in. Once the gas fills the abdominal cavity, we then introduce three other small instruments, uh, and that are our working instruments to allow the operation to take place. And essentially, the operation involves, in its simplest term, the removal of the gallbladder from the bottom end of the liver. And the gallbladder itself is attached by a duct called a cystic duct, which is a bit of plumbing to allow the gallbladder to squeeze its juices to allow you to mix with the food. 
and also a small blood vessel which feeds the actual gallbladder and keeps it alive. And what we tend to do is we clip off the duct, clip off the artery and then they remove the gallbladder which is often loosely attached to the bottom end of the liver using something called diathermy which is heat energy. The gallbladder is then put into a bag and then taken out through the hole around your belly button uh, and then the holes are subsequently closed up. Often the gallbladder may be very, very inflamed uh, and about 5% of patients require a conversion procedure and that is we may start off with keyhole surgery and because you may develop either complications or the operation which are very rare or your gallbladder is so stuck down that we can't tell the anatomy of it we may convert to an open procedure and this essentially is a cut at the bottom end of your rib cage. Unfortunately, that means that the hospital stay is going to be a little bit longer because you're going to require more pain relief. And it usually means that you're going to be in hospital for about five days. Our day case rates approach about 99% here at Hadley Wood, which is a day case centre. Uh, and most patients are home within five and a half hours. The indication for gallbladder surgery is to reduce uh, the, the pain and also to allow you to return back to a normal diet. It's important to remember that there is a lot of crossover of symptoms, um, particularly among women, and about 5-10% to 10 of patients may have bowel-related problems called irritable bowel syndrome. And the gallbladder, as we've discussed before, may not necessarily be causing the symptoms, so it's very important to get the correct assessment by a specialist compatibility surgeon in the first instance. After the operations, patients usually recover very quickly, um, and what we want the patients to do is to return to a normal lifestyle, pain-free, and eating and drinking what they want. Uh, and the bile continues to flow, the, the gallbladder itself is just a storage sac, so there is no long-term harm of having your gallbladder taken out. Most gallbladders are taken out by general surgeons, however, um, as a HPB uh, specialist, I deal specifically with the liver, pancreas and gallstone disease, and we often see the tail end of problems or very complicated decisions uh, in terms of removing gallbladders. It's an assessment which is done at the time of the operation and often gallbladders can be so inflamed that they may cause problems with the, the liver or the bile ducts. And I would urge most patients who have complicated gallbladder disease to see a specialist surgeon.